Hey everyone, this is uh, week 27, day one. This is Monday. And this week we're going to call it uh, Spoken Paintings. Uh, I did an intro. If you haven't seen the intro, uh, check it out. It's a separate video, so you can check it out uh, before this video, so it makes a little more sense. But, you know, uh, um, if I have to describe what we're going to do during this week, in a very simple way, it's just that I'm going to try to speak about my painting. And I'm not going to show you my painting. <laughs> you guys have to imagine what I did. And then after, you know, we're done with the five days of painting, we're going to unlock the paintings, you know, video game unlock. And you guys are going to be able to, to see the paintings that I've described with my words um, and compare them with the idea you had generated uh, you know, from the from my words. Uh, so we're gonna start with this first painting. I also asked uh, Danny to not edit the video, so it's just gonna be me kind of stumbling through my words, trying to find a way to to verbalize painting, which is so so tough. So let's uh, let's start. Uh, first painting, first painting I did, uh, and I'm gonna describe you know who I'm painting at times, um, and I'm also gonna try to be specific about the visual kind of qualities, the visual elements of the painting, but not too specific so that I don't want to literally describe every single, you know, moment of the painting. I, I want to leave it a little bit open so that you guys can, can imagine, you know, what I'm doing. Um, oh, uh, ground rules. Uh, I use the same palette, you know, throughout the week, and this is the palette. It's uh, titanium white, uh, bismuth yellow, Cad Red, Alizarin, Cobalt Blue, and Raw Umber. So, it's a primary color palette with an earth, um, with a kind of neutral earth. And um, what I'm doing is starting with uh, High Chroma, because they are very saturated. I mean, Bismuth Yellow is a beautiful kind of lemon yellow. Uh, Cad Red, super saturated red, you know, as well as Alizarin. And Cobalt Blue, nice, rich, Kind of deep uh, blue. So uh, we have saturation, we have kind of natural sort of grayness, uh, neutral quality with the uh, raw umber. And titanium white, I am using just regular titanium white. Goodbye titanium white with dryers. Ah, I miss it a little bit, so the painting is going to be a little bit uh, kind of creamier if I would describe it that way. So uh, every single painting throughout the week was painted with that palette. Just so you guys know, so try to imagine the possibilities, the sort of uh, chromatic possibilities that that palette would, uh, would entail. So this first painting, um, it's a sleeping pose. Uh, it, I'm, I think I'm obsessed with sleeping poses. And I think that I like them because I always feel it's kind of weird when you ask of people to stay still. You know, a huge part of uh, sort of this naturalist, realist tradition of painting is dependent upon telling people to stay still, you know, particularly if you're painting, obviously, you know, people, portraits, but you would ask your model or, or your subject matter, you know, your partner, you would ask them to stay still. If you're working from life, oh my God, you, you tell them to stay still for hours and yeah, it's a weird relationship where, where you hold this power where you can actually ask of your subject matter to just behave in a way that it's not natural to them, right? To just ask your, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, your partner to just stay still for hours just because you want to honor the act of painting from life. It's very demanding. It's very, very strange. So it's even strange in the academic sense where there's a model that you pay and there's, it's their profession and they are amazing human beings that know their body like no one. I mean, it, good models are just absolutely incredible people that are super in tune with their bodies. But even asking them to just hold very strenuous uh, po poses, it's just very weird. So. What I've noticed, particularly with my kids and my mom, and I've painted also Danny while she's sleeping, um, is that this is the only moment in our lives, you know, where we just naturally stay still, where nobody has to ask us to, you know, not move. We are at rest. We are at peace, you know, with ourselves at rest. So it's actually incredibly kind of fun to just say, 
uh, you know, this, this thing we're recreating where we just, you know, demand people to stay still is also presented to us naturally when somebody is kind of sleeping and, and resting. So that's why I, I love it. And I particularly love it with, with my children because, you know, when, <laughs> when they would just sleep, it, it's just this beautiful thing because when they're awake, they have this insane amount of energy that you can't just control. You can't just kind of tell that little human being to just stay still. That can only just drive you absolutely insane. So, so this is um, a very natural kind of resting pose of my niece, of Cristina. She's an amazing dancer, by the way. Uh, and, you know, this was after lunch and she just wanted to take a nap. And every time, you know, somebody that I love, you know, my family, my, my friends, my kids um, is sleeping, I'm always like, oh, I'm going to take a picture of you. That may look weird. I apologize, but it's always, you know, with good intent. <laughs> and um, took a picture of her, you know, in my in my mother's house, and uh, and I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is beautiful. This is amazing. But I'll describe what I liked about it because it's not just about painting stillness, which it is. But um, there is there is a quality also in that sleeping pose that I love that has to do with light. I always speak about this and I always say how I paint light, you know, as a kind of traditionally educated painter, I, I, I love light. I love to paint light. I understand that everything that I love about nature, you know, comes first, you know, because of light. It starts with light and it starts with light and it ends with light, even though we do a painting. But there was this uh, beautiful light that was actually you know, because she was kind of burrowed, because she was kind of nestled, um, her face was kind of in shadow with her nose, just because our nose just kind of juts out of her, um, of her head, it always catches a little bit of light. It's always like the top of her forehead and, and our nose just kind of peeking to try and catch some light. Um, so it, it was actually catching some light and I love that about the portrait, but when I stepped back, I realized that you know, there was a, a, a sort of bigger lighting condition where this painting was about almost like three values. So it was, a, it was the face that was kind of in shade. It was a dark mass because she was wearing like a dark sweater. Uh, that was the mass like in the bottom. And then her arms, she's kind of like fair skin, you know, super light skin like I am. And her arms were in light. Her, you know, these little bit of forearms were um, in light. And it was glorious. So I had my darkest dark, I had a mid-tone with the face in shade, and I had then little bits of the forearm that were super light. And I was like, yes, I love that. One, two, three. Now, this was a tough part to try and have those, you know, arms be in light. I had to control the value of the uh, sheets, of the bed sheet. Um, and that one had to be between the light of the arms and the mid-tone of the uh, head kind of in shade. And it was, it was really cool. I, it had to almost like flow from that light. It, the, the, the form had to be, the little bit of form had to be light enough, but it almost had to flow into the light of the uh, sheet, of the bed sheet. And that value of the bed sheet, and this was super cool, was actually very close to the value of her hair in light you know, because she was wearing her hair up uh, and she's got this beautiful curly hair. So she was wearing her hair up and, and that value kind of flooded into the, the hair. It was so nice. It was like same value. This is something that I love, like same value, but different hue, like changes in hue within the same value. Oh my God, that's like heaven for me to paint that. It's always like the one thing that I enjoy the most. And that happened with the hair. So the hair has this kind of, um, yellowish, orangish, greenish, don't ask me to describe that color, <laughs> uh, hue and the bed sheets were kind of more, you know, purple, you know, like a cooler red. Um, and and I, I just loved that the fact that I could kind of go from one to the other and then go down to the kind of darkness of, of that head and shade, then those little two accents of those forearms in light and then boof, this kind of dark mass of, um, 
of her sweater just kind of framing her really, really nicely. So it's a very simple painting. It's a very peaceful painting, but I don't think it's just, you know, oh, this kind of glorious, blissful rest. I think there's also like, um, because you know this person is alive, I guess, I mean, I mean, me consciously, because I looked at her and I knew she was sleeping, you also kind of realize that her mind is still going. Like, th there's, there's still, like, a, a, a ton of gears turning. There's still, you know, there's, there's something that's alive underneath there. So there is stillness and there is life, you know, at the same time. And I think that that's one of the coolest things that you can try and capture when you're doing one of these resting poses. But um, I like the painting quite a bit. I fought with the um, with the tipping of, with, with the angle of the head quite a bit. My drawing, I realized something that I'm so careless with my drawing. I mean, I'm, I I get super excited with my drawing when I when I'm painting. Uh, and sometimes I'm so willing to sacrifice drawing because I don't believe drawing has to do solely with accuracy. I think that that's just, you know, a tiny uh, possibility within drawing. But I've noticed that I'm struggling a lot, like when I want to be uh, disciplined. Oh my God, because I don't do it so much. It takes me so long to try and get things right. I mean, it, it's a disgrace. Like, I should be able to do that a little bit better. But it's a struggle. I mean, drawing is not easy. So, you know, I, I don't expect it to come easy. So I had to struggle a little bit with that head. But I think in the end, it just looks very, very natural. I, I really like that painting. I, I fought with it a, a whole ton because I tried to be sensitive. You know, when I have to do paintings that are awfully, awfully sensitive, when, I'm, when I have to be very sensible with with you know who I'm painting, I struggle a lot because it doesn't come naturally to me. What, what does come naturally to me is to be kind of character driven and to um, accentuate um, a ton of things, like to stylize a ton of things and, and to emphasize a ton of things to the degree where, where it almost looks like a, like a caricature. So I, I love that. I absolutely love that. That's where that's my bread and butter. That's where I feel like yes, this is this is me painting. So when I have to paint somebody who I think expresses tenderness, um, uh, it's, it's very tough. That's why I, I've said this before. But uh, when I was you know painting my kids, I'd be horrified you know, because I, I see my kids. I'm not saying that, I mean they they are beautiful to me. You know I, I I wouldn't just impose that beauty on anyone else that idea of my kids being beautiful on anyone else. But when I saw them, I was like, I, I, I don't know if I'm able to transmit, you know, what I feel about them with, with my hands, with my, you know, ability. I just have, I, I don't have, you know, that, that tool in my hands, that necessary kind of love in my hands to speak about it. And I was so scared, you know, for the longest time, I just didn't feel I, I could do it until I started doing it and then I realized I just have to love my kids and, and that'll show up, you know, while I paint. It sounds super romantic, but I truly believe in it. So, uh, so this is my niece who I, you know, love dearly also and I think a lot of that kind of uh, showed up during the painting. So uh, I enjoyed that painting. <laughs> Again, hopefully, you know, with my description, um, you guys are able to sort of imagine a painting, to, to imagine something, to, to just think that you're able to reconstruct this image. And you guys are not going to be able to see this painting, you know, until Saturday when I post uh, all of them. Uh, but, you know, just keep that idea fresh in your mind. I, I would love to know if, if what you guys imagined is very far from what I painted, or if it actually is close, or, you know, if I'm just being super hyperbolic about what I did, and if I'm just not able to describe it in a very um, kind of honest manner. I, I hope I am, I really hope. I, I think I can, I understand myself enough as a painter and as a human being that I, I, I'm not gonna exaggerate my words and I'm not gonna try and sell you this idea of something that, you know, it's not there. But I would love to see if we could compare notes, if we could compare those ideas. And hopefully the painting by the end, I don't want to say it won't disappoint, because I don't want to, you know, compete with what you imagine. What you imagine, I'm sure it's, it's wonderful. It actually speaks about you guys. Um, 
But I, I just want to see if the two of them can kind of live together, those two ideas, the idea of painting that comes from the spoken word uh, can live alongside the, the actual painting and, and, you know, what that kind of looks like or, or what that means. I don't know. It's a, it's a great exercise. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow where we'll do a uh, second painting. But remember, tomorrow is uh, Spanish Tuesdays, Martes Español. So if you don't speak Spanish, you know what? Close your eyes. Give it a chance. I mean, I think I speak a little more uh, quickly when I'm speaking in Spanish. And maybe it's harder for you guys that are not, you know, Spanish speakers or, or that maybe can pick up a few words to, um, to pick up what I'm saying. But just close your eyes and maybe, you know, it's like, it's like finding a book. You know, let's say you, you don't uh, understand French. You don't read French. Um, you don't know how to speak French. But you find in this deserted island uh, a French book. <laughs> and you start reading it and maybe, you know, in a whole page you'll pick up like five words maybe that you think are closer to something that, you know, <laughs> that resemble an idea of, of something that's in your language and you make up a story and maybe that's kind of cool too. And for you guys that do understand Spanish, that's awesome. So we can do this exercise in Spanish uh, tomorrow. But I guess that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Keep that idea fresh in your mind. And we'll compare notes on Saturday. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.